Hello everyone. Today, Liverpool team will be talking about cooperative learning. So we are going to cover several areas related to cooperative learning, such as the definition, techniques, types, and examples. Finally, we will discuss how to design and implement cooperative learning in classrooms. Cooperative learning is a term that refers to a classroom techniques in which students work on learning activities in small groups and receive rewards or recognition based on their group performance. It has three significant elements, task structure, reward structure, and authority structure. Task structure, where uh, all students work together in heterogeneous or homogeneous groups. In uh, the reward structure, it varies according uh, to the kind of the behavior, and it includes uh, rewards like grades, teacher approval, and tangible rewards. There are three types of rewarding, interpersonal reward, competitive reward, and reward independent. The authority structure refers to the control that students exercise over the activities as opposed to the exercise by teacher and other adults. Cooperative learning techniques. There are several techniques. Some of them uh, are academic and the others are behavioral. So uh, some of the academic uh, techniques, think, pair, share. In this strategy, students uh, get the opportunity to work individually and then share their learning with uh, others. Uh, to Jexo, in this strategy, uh, basically students uh, and groups teach uh, each other so uh, they just get all the elements of the lesson together and they uh, try to teach each other uh, each element separately. Uh, the third one is the dish uh, mat, which is not very common, but it is very uh, effective uh, techniques. Uh, so we divide the class into four uh, to five uh, groups, uh, four to five students in each group. Uh, they write uh, their responses individually in the corner of the dish, and uh, once they finish, they, they agree together uh, what is the best answer or response, and they write in the middle of the dish. Uh, the fourth one is the six hats. Uh, this is very common and uh, effective way because uh, it does enhance uh, the uh, differentiation in the class. It can be uh, done in different ways, either to give each group uh, one hat uh, to uh, focus on or to give every member of the group uh, a hat to to uh, respond uh, to the question about it and then they uh, collate their uh, thoughts and their their answers together the fifth one the four corners uh, it's a debatable uh, strategies where groups uh, will uh, uh, debate and uh, try to prove their thoughts and opinion against uh, each other and they will be able to uh, convince the others about what do they think this requires high order thinking and critical thinking uh, uh, skills. Uh, now I will talk about the behavior management cooperative learning techniques. Uh, I will just talk about one, which is the snake and the ladder. In this technique, uh, groups uh, will be uh, assigned one snake and ladder uh, board, and there they will be just uh, controlling their behavior and classroom uh, uh, engagement because uh, the reward or the punishment will be as per the group, not individually. So all of them will start uh, supporting each other and will start reminding each other about the expected uh, behavior and efforts in the class. I will be speaking now about the types of cooperative learning. We have three main types of cooperative learning, the formal cooperative learning groups, the informal cooperative learning groups, and the cooperative based groups. Um, to give you a brief definition of formal cooperative learning groups, it is to be used to teach specific content, while the informal one is used to ensure active cognitive processing of information during a specific lecture or demonstration 
and the cooperative based group is used to provide a long term support and assistance for the academic progress. Starting with the first type, which is formal cooperative groups. We will say that uh, this type of group uh, consists of students working together in a class for a specific period or for several, several weeks to achieve the learning goal. Examples of this could be like completing a specific unit, um, writing a report, conducting a, a survey or an experiment, answering a question. These are all considered as formal cooperative groups. The informal cooperative groups incorpor incorporate group learning with passive teaching by drawing attention to the material through smaller groups uh, throughout the lesson uh, or by the end of the lesson. Example of this when the instructor would say, turn to your neighbor to complete, uh, for example, a minute paper could be at the beginning of the class, at the end of the class to respond to a multiple choice of questions and justify their answers. Speaking about base cooperative group, this is a long, uh, as mentioned earlier, it's a long term um, process. Um, it can include uh, complex subjects over uh, a semester or uh, a longer term. Uh, the, the use of this group, uh, it improves attendance, it personalizes the work required at the school experience and improves the quality and quantity of learning. Um, schools and uh, teachers are always enhanced when having these base groups. They give the responsibility to conduct, as I said, because it's a long term. They give like uh, a year long service project to improve the school. This is one example. And these are the three cooperative base, the three cooperative groups. Now we come to the end of our presentation and uh, we are going to talk about the examples and of the uses of cooperative learning. We are having here cooperative learning exercise can be done as a very simple for five minutes only in the classroom exercises an assignment or more complex as a project. And if we are considering those points, we are going to hear having a description more generally in terms of the low, medium or high regarding the students or the members inside the cooperative learning. How we spend that uh, regarding the time investment. So we have uh, again the low or medium or the high. And we have here for the low, we are considering very simple and formal for only 15 minutes inside the classroom. For the medium, we are considering two meeting sessions, for example, or more formal. If there, it is a high high time investment, we are considering the complex or formal across mul uh, multiple class periods. For the next part, we have five key steps for implementing and designing the cooperative learning inside the classroom. Those steps are, first of all, the first step, pre-instructional planning. Here, the teacher rule is to plan and well organize the group and well form them in a structured way, so every member knows exactly how to interact inside, inside that group in the classroom. Step number two, the teacher again introduced the activity to the students and giving them the marching orders, explaining the, the task and giving them the, the criteria they are working on in order to succeed in that group activity. The structure of the cooperative aspect to the, uh, of the work with special attention to the components of positive interdependence and individual accountability. Step number three, the uh, monitor and intervene. Here, the students are working more independently while the teacher are just circulating through the room or through the online uh, breakout rooms he is here collecting the data and uh, just assess whether the students are working and understanding the assignment or not. The teacher is giving feedback, praising the work of the students. To step number four, which is assessing the student's work. Some informal assessment is already done while uh, the teacher is monitoring the groups during the exercise. However, once the group finishes the project, 
the work should be assessed by both the instructor and the group. Finally, we come to the last step, which is the process. In this step, the group processing involves asking the groups to rate their own performance and set goals for themselves in order to improve the group activity or the cooperative activity. Thank you so much. Hopefully you get the benefits of that presentation about the cooperative learning.